live. Hello, Twitch. How are we today? Let's get all these messages sent. I finally got it preloaded so where I don't have to do it all on my phone. <clears throat> so, we'll see how this goes. I'm back from DC. I did not end up with the con crud. Yeah, sorry, Tony. May have to rework that next time. Uh, my day has already been insane, and this is the only time I can do it today. I would actually prefer to do it later in the day. But you're here, and that's all that matters. Hello, hello. John, that you? Reed Whistles, what's up? How is everyone doing? Getting all my messaging set up here, and then we'll get going. Give everyone a chance to get in. We can talk about DC. Talk about uh, being thankful that Tony wasn't there, so that was good. Wow, my chat bot's already on point. Right out the jump. Let me see the Nakaya before I have to leave. Hmm. We'll see. I'll, I'll give you the sneak preview. Sup, dog. Mr. Mike was there. Jesse, Jesse mentioned 1,000 times at the show, Jesse. So there's the Nakaya. So we'll talk about this later. It's butamus. Super happy with it. Super happy with it. Yeah, it came out good. It's, uh, it's got really good color in it and um, it's in perfect shape. I saw John, you sent us an email that's now going to live in our not go inbox for our in infinity, I'm thinking. So I appreciate that. It'll never be deleted until it's made, which means it may never get deleted because it may never get made. I'm sure you and Jeff have some top secret action going on there. I don't know what it is. So we'll give everyone a few minutes here to jump on. Then we'll, uh, we'll go over the show. But it was a, it was a huge show. Like literally huge, and it was very good. Had a uh, had a blast. The people were awesome as always during these shows. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully you know Jeff as well as I do. I'm not sure that you do. So uh, he's still got one of my dad's backpacks there to repair from last year sometime. So good luck with that. <laughs> uh, that's my boy. You're my boy, Jeff. <laughs> Inked and distilled, row flow in the house, back in Toronto, pounding that whiskey back. I saw your I saw your pictures, man. Yes, absolutely, Tony. That was very interesting, to say the least. <laughs> We're gonna go with interesting. Oh, I need to clear my desk here because I'm gonna have uh, some stuff. I hear you, buddy. I hear you. So, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Only for that person, not really for me. All right, let's talk about this show. It was amazing. I, I've, any of you that follow me, I, you know, I've written about it, I've podcasted about it, but I wanted to give anyone a chance to talk about DC if they wanted to. I have a few other things to talk about, like this in my hand here. Blaine, I will not be there tomorrow. Jeff should be. We'll probably both be there on Monday. Um, I don't know Jeff's schedule tomorrow. He was in today. Salmon101, appreciate the follow. Thank you so much. Ink and Distilled, thanks for the follow. Look at y'all. Dan, you recovered, buddy? So me and Dan didn't hardly get to talk at all. Like the first, like Friday night, we talked a little bit at the bar. And then by Saturday and Sunday, we were so busy. I don't know if we hardly said, hey, we certainly didn't say goodbye. <laughs> so have you recovered yet, Dan? I hope so, because uh, we were all busy. And that's what we want as vendors at a pin show. So from like the business perspective, it was all amazing. Like I can only speak for myself. Stereo Sound, thanks so much. Uh, I appreciate the appreciate the sub. That is awesome. I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna talk about Twitch a little bit more towards the end of this. Um, Jesse, thank you. 
you rule so much and how all of my twitch lead up um is getting to this point to where i can really put the pedal on the metal starting now kimmy oh wow that's an intense first show so yeah um I don't want to speak for Dan, but it was a highly successful show from a business perspective. I would guess that Dan had a pretty good show, too. If I could uh, paint a picture like he's saying, we never saw each other again, hardly, except maybe like, you know, ghost passing in the night after Friday night where we hung out for a little bit. It was so busy um, that it was all we could do to keep up. And Dan works harder than me by a lot. I mean, um, he is in there just like constantly uh nib to the grindstone like literally the entire so best show yet from dan so that's great and this was our best show from knock so as a business that's what you want right and you want to be able to do that in a an efficient manager efficient manner i should say evan thanks bud my wife is very uh curious about that bottle i have in the fridge so thank you um so yeah, you know, you want to be able to allowed to work in a environment that's conducive to letting your customers come and visit you, check out your goods, spend money. And oh, it should. It should like pop up when you uh for every like renewal, it should show on there, so we should see. So you know, I we were in a good location. We didn't have any issues hitting, um, getting set up on Friday. We got our tables early. Um, it worked. Like, the only drama we had was where our table location was. We were in the, the it, it's hard without painting a picture for y'all who weren't there, but we were basically in a hallway that led to the giant ballroom. And it's a very wide hallway, but still with people stopping at our tables and we were next to Van S. Pins. It could get a little crowded, but it was wide enough to where most of the time it was being good. Oh, look, so there it did the two months thing. So how did you figure it out? So Ree Wizzles, he's a professional. He knows how to do all this. So, you know, I was a little bit concerned about traffic flow around our table. Could people get to us? Will people just scooch past us because it was so busy? and keep going but it turned out it really didn't affect us at all um friday was slow i thought from business business wise but like i said during that time when people were asking me how was the day going it went fantastic we sold a lot i felt it was a little bit slow but i couldn't even remember you know the previous friday um because it was last year was such a such a mess so um and so that entire day like was it was a good day to get set up scheduled and just kind of you know into the swing of things if you will and what i was saying a second ago what i told everybody was i don't care how today is i hope it's good and i anticipate it being good but saturday is everything at the show so depending on your saturday how your saturday goes it was will determine your success for the entire show and that was the case. Saturday was packed from the jump. There was a line to get in at 9 a.m. in the morning. We were ready to go right when people let in, and we started selling, like, immediately. And we didn't stop till probably late in the afternoon, you know, 3, 4 o'clock. You know, we had lunch ordered into the table. Um, you know, we got away to eat for a minute. and um, But otherwise, we were just there uh, going going at it pretty pretty solidly late, like, till 5, 30, 6 o'clock. Um, when they they kind of shut down around five o'clock and then have everyone out by six so hey sam jing um no they did not share normally uh promoters don't share i can get those numbers from friends that have the promoter's ear so i'll try to do that because i'd like to know myself because i don't know the number of of people through the door however related to previous years um so yeah it was good so then what Dan said in the chat room, Sunday, grrr face, I just like saying that, what's up, Dan was saying that Sunday was almost as good as Saturday, and I gotta agree, like, we don't do near as much as Saturday on total, but what Sunday has at DC is busyness that other shows Sundays don't have, 
like Atlanta was our previous best show and we normally don't sell much on sun- Sunday in Atlanta like in the hundreds of dollars like super quiet like almost nothing um, you know if we have like a thousand dollar day in Atlanta on Sunday that's a good day um, DC is not like that at all DC is pretty much you know like a mini Saturday there it's people just people are there in the beginning they're there all day it slowed down a little bit towards the end of the day but it was just really really good um, so I have zero complaints about you know anything related to the show I hope um, this gets its mojo back uh, as I as I mentioned before I think everything is great about the show except there's not all not a lot Cal right tools appreciate appreciate the sub thank you so much yeah so Sunday we had a lot of people spending a lot of people spending late so we'll stay as as long as there's people there buying we'll stay you know and let people look around and ask us questions and um you know up right up until the end right until we had like three sales after we pulled everything off the table three or four sales maybe um so it was just like non-stop we thought we were done and then people kept falling out of the ballroom had to go past our table and we're looking for one more thing so and that was still at like 5 36 o'clock it was getting to be pretty late and we still we were still making sales so you know um yeah the only complaint in general is just the food and beverage at the bar and restaurant it's not great it's like your average hotel food it's nothing to write home about it's completely fine but uh, but the service is really slow um i don't know that there's anything the promoter can do the hotel didn't really make changes after last year that they could have like we overran them so bad last year and you would think knowing having that information you could prepare differently and they really didn't like i don't know that it was any better or worse than last year which last year was really bad just from a service perspective so the saving grace there was the people like we all had you know so many friends and people to just hang out with so you know we just kind of spread out all over a lot of people brought their own booze which was this hotel didn't care like atlanta's super crazy about that like if you so much as like lean over and grab something they're like on you like really quick this one we had like bottles of scotch out on the table and things like that so you kind of had to make your own drinks (laughs) at the show a lot which no one really complains about but it could be better and for some reason it's not if that's my only complaint I'll live with everything you know I'm fine with that I would prefer to have the eating and drinking options of our previous show hotel um, but I'll take what I get with this hotel because everything else is so good that I'm okay with that you know it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be perfect it rarely is so uh, I did get out of the hotel once to go eat this year where I didn't last year so um, I should try to do that more often every year so Anyway, I just think overall, no complaints here, and actually uh, lots of praise. Like I think, I think it went really, really well. So if y'all have any questions about DC, who was there, who wasn't, um, we'll uh, we'll start talking about um, some of the things I picked up, which is very little. We'll do more of a uh, a quick show and tell of some things that I didn't talk about on the podcast, and uh, one of those was a very popular bar. Uh, discussion that we had around a new company slash software product slash app that allows you to build your own notepad. So my good friend Dave Ray, Mountain Biker Dave, y'all all know him if you're in the Slack or in the pin community, um, head of the guinea pig, uh, New York, or New York State meetup. Oh, awesome, Jesse. Glad you like it. Um, he's coming out with a new product. He is a uh, uh, fidgeter extraordinaire like jeff and i have worked with him on other side projects in the past just like getting things done uh, from a design perspective he is really really good at what he does so he brought um he brought what's going to be called blank slate paper company and i got a sample of one of the pads here 
and what he's doing is it's going to be a fully customizable let's see if I can not destroy my desk here it's gonna be a fully customizable notepad with um, different I'm gonna show you all this I'm just trying to find the right page to to show you so let's start with a couple of the early pages up front so this is like the, this is their sampler pack that they gave out to a bunch of us so it's basically you can have this fountain pen fountain pen friendly paper in you know in a pad style um, there'll be different sizes uh, eventually I think it's just a for it first and they you can control everything printed on the page I think that's the best way to put it literally everything line width dot width colors um, patterns everything you anything you can imagine you ever want on the page you can control it by using the app that Dave's in the middle of coding so we got to play with the app on his iPad at the bar one night and you, you can literally manipulate everything so you see this thickness of pages almost every one of these is a some type of different format the paper is awesome and thick and fountain pen friendly and smooth it's really nice so you can see on this page maybe maybe not I don't know what it's looking like on camera but this is a variation of dot saturation so you can change how dark or bright your lines are and dots are and the options are endless ink and distill thanks buddy are these coming up again um, this is a page the previous page was lighter dots this one's darker dots so you can um, let's see let me find you some more interesting pages here and you don't have to fill the dots so you can see all the way down to the bottom there big dots open in the middle like literally everything you can think of I'm not gonna go through every page but I'm going through a lot because they're all different dots and reticles size doesn't matter color doesn't matter shape doesn't matter you can see the line width millimeters in between lines which is really cool for those of you who like line paper you're heathens but you know I'll allow it um, you can modify sorry my phone is going off here you can um, modify the grid spacings you know you can have rectangular grids if you don't like square grids you can you can have anything you can literally have anything you want and I'll show you the page that I like if I can find it here so here's an example of uh, oh sweet we just got a real we just got a real spam in there thank you Tony Wow that's the first one I've seen um, so this is uh, dots and reticles in the corners yay moderation here is I don't know is this a French ruled so it's got the rectangular squares divided by vertical yellow lines every that's going to be about 10 centimeters or so because that looks like a double size uh, this is my favorite yeah i got a spam it was all big uh big uh you know it was about manhood <laughs> let's leave it there it was totally spam not someone getting saying something um it's a shirt that uh what's his name <laughs> Dale, Dale what have <laughs> it didn't go in so it was it was uh, auto modded out so we didn't get it fortunately because it was a legit spam so it never showed up and then uh, mod cleared it up so this is a uh, grid lines with blue these are probably two millimeter squares with brown lines every six squares so it's really cool it's uh yeah it's a super neat feature that they i have it on uh extreme to begin with so oh here's a page for tony blank i didn't even notice these in here the first time all right so like and i didn't even get through half the book you know there's colors in here so this isn't ready yet but you can be sure i will um Oh, this is a, a double-sided book. So actually, I went through most of it. So this is a two, basically two packs of uh, two packs of stuff. So this not ready yet. Probably in the fall. Um, Dave's still working on it. He's getting close. He had to finish some of the payment systems on the back end. I have some 
he gave a bunch of us some access, some pre-access so we can go place orders, not to get products, but just to test the website and see how it's working for launch. So I can guarantee you will be hearing about this um, once, once it launches because it's a really cool product and I like to see. Yeah, so I now see at the bottom, so Domtar Bold 28, I see at the bottom of this page, or the HP 32, which is a, um, oh, that's what my differentiators are here. So thank you, Joseph, for bringing that up. So the first thing I showed you on was all on the Domtar, and then everything that's in this section, which is the same thing, is on the HP. So I'll test these out. Um, I think it's pretty much locked in. I haven't written on them yet. Um, looks like September. Right now, pads only, top adhered. So he's got to get underway and um, figuring out what's uh, what he's going to do. But it's got a nice scored uh, top here, so you know you can fold it back. Well, I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. So um, you know it's coming soon. We're getting into the testing phase of the website, and I think he's got uh, production stuff getting getting soon. So fall is almost here. The back super thick and heavy chipboard. Like this is. This is durable stuff. Like, I don't even know what what thicknesses it is, but it's uh, if you're familiar with Doan Doan paper idea journals, it's like that. Um, we'll have to check. We'll have to check. So it's uh, blank slate blank slate paper .com. You can go there, crash the website. I don't know what's up there. I think right now it's just like a um, early access right now. So the front page is locked, and I think it might just be a code up there. Um, I do have a magic code in here somewhere to go test out the payment system. So we'll uh, figure that out. But yeah, just uh, follow. Did Dave put a, I'm sure he's going to have a Twitter account for this, but Mountain Biker Dave and Slack on Twitter, MTBKR Dave. Uh, just follow him on Twitter. And I'll be shooting out links whenever he launches it because I want to support him anyway. I can. He, he's been hugely supportive of Knock and Pen Addict since day one. And, uh, I love what he's done here. So, very cool. All right, other thing I didn't get at on the podcast was the pen. Yes, this is the brother of the Babish. <laughs> so, if anyone uh, if anyone cooks with Babish, uh, he will look familiar. <laughs> they look a lot alike. Um, this is my Red Dragon Penco pen. I can't, I can't remember the name of the material that I sent Chewy uh, to make this pen, but it came out great. The reason why I hadn't talked about it yet, because I hadn't picked out a nib for it, <laughs> so I haven't inked it up. Um, but I love the shape. It's got a slight taper uh, in the barrel. It's got a little bit of a concave style in the ends of the pen, which I like. Just something a little neat, simple. It's got a really nice uh, kick out here on the grip section. So... I have this built around. I tried. He was sold out at the. Uh, he was sold out at the show, so I tried to get one. And um, what was I gonna say? So Trudeau, this material, I owe everyone a picture. <laughs> no one had them, and I have some at home, so I gotta get them. I gotta get them out the box. And I've been so busy since I got home. I realized today that I hadn't put a nib in here, and I was just running around like a maniac this morning, so I didn't have a chance. So. I've got number six nibs out the yin yang. I just got to pick on one to uh, pick one to to put in here. So I'll have this inked up tonight. I'm sure. Clipless, absolutely. Just wait till you see the next pen that's clipless. You'll little freak out even more. So this pen material, to me, looks like the spitting of an image of the green mosaic sailor king of pens that I have. So I got to get them side by side for a photo shoot to see if this is actually the material. And if anyone's interested in it, I'll share the link where I got it. Um, it was a link that uh, Brian had sent me to pick out materials from. It was one of their materials, but it's super, super pretty. So I gotta get this inked up. Um, gotta get my nib, my nib going, but uh, otherwise I really like the pen, really like the shape. So I have a stack of nibs I can use. I've just been crazy busy. Like today is insane. Like I had to stream today because I've been wanting to so bad, and I just had to make the time, so um, everything else kind of fell by the wayside. The one purchase I made on the pen front, 
at the show was actually this Nakaya Piccolo. So, um, like I mentioned on the podcast, I don't know if y'all have listened to this. The, yeah, it's Thursday already. This week is dumb. Um, my friend Rez, y'all may know, uh, Ewing online, uh, goes by Rez. He found a guy that was set up in a sliver of a table, literally as wide as a 12 pin tray. And all he had was two trays of Nakayas and one tray of a Con- Visconti's like boom, boom, boom. And so he took a picture of the um, Nakaya trays and so he could send them to his wife. And then he knew I liked Nakaya. So he said, hey, I found this guy. This is not something you usually see at a show. You might see if nibs.com is not at the show, you're going to see like one or two random Nakayas throughout dealers tables. It's hit or miss. There's no real Nakaya presence. Um, generally at a show then on friday friday i saw a gentleman that had about five i didn't like any of his and this guy i didn't see at all until saturday late afternoon ewing showed me this picture and i said okay show me where this guy is because the picture he still had probably a dozen at the time yeah i've got his name uh rick i I, it's in my email all right blaine have fun um i'll I'll get you his name because he's gonna start sending me (laughs) He's going to start sending me his new purchases now. Um, some Somehow he's got a Nakaya in, in with someone. I don't know when, where, how. But yes, this is the Heki Tamanuri Piccolo clipless. So it's the Sakara model. Um, and everyone, like once they figured out who this guy was, everyone was going over there. And like I said, it was literally, he was in between. He took like one-eighth of someone's table or one sixth of someone's table. I don't know what size tables these were. I think they were eight foot. So he literally had, he was wider than the space he was allocated on this table, but people were picking over these Nakayas and he had some really good ones. It weren't, they weren't just basic ones. He like had some decapods and he's had some Ishmaes and he had some really nice nibs. Um, I don't know, it was nice. I could just afford the one and i am super happy with this it's in brilliant condition um it has a broad cursive italic grind already done on it so it's a wonderful writer for me um it's not too wide and uh i don't know i just love it let's see if i can i'll give you a writing sample so i wanted a i didn't know what ink i wanted to put on here so i chose the uh Faber-Castell Viper Green. So I wanted a green. I didn't want a brown and or orange and purple would look good, but I wanted a green. And this green is really, this green is new, so I wanted to test it to review it anyway. Uh, So let me write this down real quick so you can see what the nib looks like with my handwriting. So not, the color is what sold me in the shape. I'm a Piccolo fan. It's a, um, it's a very um, smaller pen, but this is what I what I enjoy in my Nakayas. Actually, three of my four Nakayas are Piccolos. So you can see you can see why I like this nib. So that's my handwriting. Yeah, that Ishmael Decapod was really really good looking. Um, that was actually too small for me. And if I'm going to pay that much, I wanted to, I want to be really, really right on that pen. The other Decapod, um, if anyone knows in the chat room, it's the yellow brown. It's so it's the brown with the yellow undertones where this one has the green. Um, I don't know what the one is called, but, uh, what that finish is called, but I, I came this close to buying that one. I just didn't like the nib. It had a gold clip and a gold nib, but there was something about the nib that I didn't like. Um, plus, that was that was a lot of money too. But it, it was really, really nice. I came close to buying that one. There was also a Naka Eye in Heki Temenuri, which I almost bought as a match, but the guy that was shopping with me, uh, he picked that one up. And I was like, you just take it, because I didn't want to be tempted to buy two, because that's just too much freaking money. Um, I'm so happy with this pen. I mean, just look at the finish on this. It's just spot on everywhere. 
I know it's still kind of hard to see, but I mean, just look at that. It's really great. It's right on the money all the way around. This is a perfect pen for me. So like I am getting close. Like I know I've talked about selling some of my pens and I think it's probably time to, to do that pretty soon. I'm getting close to just like cashing in all my chips and going on the going on a Nakaya bender and consolidating into the pens I like the most because I mean this pen it's expensive but I mean I don't care I've already thrown it in my pocket I want to have it I want to use it those are the pens that speak to me the most you know um, I'll obviously not get rid of all my pens I'm gonna keep tons and tons of pens but to have a shopping focus um, I think I'm at that point where I need to focus because otherwise um, like for example, there was no pens on my list going into the show. I had, there was nothing I needed, wanted. Um, yeah, being the Nakaya guy would be kind of scary a little bit. I'm not going to totally go off the deep end. Yeah. I just want to, I think it's time for me to change a little bit. Like I'm pretty covered on the modern stuff, right? Like those new Aurora Optimus came out in that purple nebulosa. It's like, it looks amazing, but that's as much as this Nakaya almost right and I like this pen better I have my Optimas and I have my Nebulosa and I'm good with those the Nakayas I'm okay having more of those if I'm not spending money elsewhere so I'm gonna go through this reallocation thing I think throughout the end of the year I'm gonna try to sell a bunch of my pens I know I've been saying that for a long time now um, but I promise it's, it's coming soon and you know I love my sailor pens I'm gonna stick with a lot of those and then you know my Nakayas and just I want to get the special stuff to me you know what's the most important to me and you know I'll also be keeping lots of stuff for reference I actually that's one of my favorite excuses to use that um, I do need some pins for reference so I uh, I I use that excuse a lot to keep some of the pins I probably should sell like how many Pelican 800s do I need well apparently all of them <laughs> that I've bought so far I want to keep um, I, that's not true I did sell my tortoise because I wasn't using it so but I'll keep like my ocean swirl and demonstrator probably gonna keep both of those just because they're cool so um, another thing at the show is I carried around heads on a stick so our pins are here they're in the US they are at Anna's house they are being kitted and carded actually she's gonna send them most to me me and the kids are gonna finish those up so I wanted to show everyone since we had the black Tallulah yeah, Masayama grinds for reference. I, I got that problem too. So this is the Kickstarter case. Y'all have all seen that. But I was carrying it around all weekend because we had the black Tallulahs on sale. And the clay Tallulahs should be... Yeah, Jim, this is not a color I thought would work, to be perfectly honest with you. It is so good. It is legit really, really, really good. Um, I don't know that everyone will love it but it came out beyond our ex best expectations. So um, look for that soon. I will send out the surveys maybe tonight if I get a chance, maybe tomorrow. Um, that's on the short list there. The other thing I got, which I won't talk about this too much because I've already talked about it a bunch, is the Lamy Orange uh, ink cartridges, the real Lamy Orange ink cartridges. So they're nice. Thanks, Anna Encantadora. I don't know if she's in the chat room today. She's still in the U.S., but she's probably out sightseeing. So that's a fun pen. I've been uh, enjoying enjoying it so far. I put it in this Lamy Vista. That This Vista is special. Uh, my friend Tanya made this for me. This is old orange. So that's the kicker with this. So it's not copper orange. And this was, we figured it was about seven or eight years ago, they did this promotion. All these ink cartridge cases come with a not for sale packaging. So we found a company that was selling them and uh, essentially the Panatic listeners bought them all out. They're not available anymore. So we're hoping they're gonna come out with a new orange one of these days. But back to the pen, Tanya made this for me. Um, she made this into an eyedropper. So it's epoxy sealed um, at the ends and you know, um, ready to go for eyedropper, which I have before, but I wanted to see this orange ink in it, so I used it for one of these. So, love the color, love the nib. And the light keeps changing on me in here because I don't have any lights on. This is all natural light, so I know it's getting brighter and darker as the clouds are outside. So I'll see if you can see this orange. It's very bright if you're familiar with uh, Ackermann 
uh, number 16 is that the uh, orange bovin or Mont Blanc lucky orange it's a bright vibrant straight up orange like no yellow no brown no red just orange and this is an extra fine nib so you're not going to get all of the colors in here that you see but it is really good so we'll see if y'all can see that at all I'm not sure so yeah yeah Rose got some top secret stuff um, the Tulula fits mechanical pencils wonderfully I have a black wing that I carry that's probably about two inches shorter it's not gonna carry a full-length pencil um, I don't yeah before I took this one to DC I had a brush pen a tech liner and a pencil in the in the case of slots here but the black wing was i don't know it was pretty big what do they start at around nine inches mine this probably six and a half seven inches somewhere around there it'll fit once you once you sharpen it down some so yeah not right out the gate full all right we got a little bit of mail call that we're going to do real quick i actually have two packages from friends that I don't know what they are. I have a guess at what one is because he did email me after the uh, after yesterday's episode. But before that, I got a huge box from a company called Kunisawa, if I'm saying that right. So they emailed me before the pen show. So they wanted to send me some notebooks. I looked on the site, I said, hey, this looks good. I thought they'd send me two, three notebooks. They sent me probably 15 notebooks of all different sizes so this isn't a company <laughs> that's going in lightly they uh they went big right out the gate so i've shipped a bunch out to all the reviewers for the pen attic so i kept a couple but they range the biggest ones are a5 like i have a5 spiral bound there's a5 hard bound there's a5 soft bound there's some smaller size notebooks there's some steno pads and they have graph paper sticky notes so I sent all of these out to be reviewed to um, Jeff, Sarah, and Susan, and even kept some of myself. So we'll give, we'll be doing some giveaways right now. This is uh, this is the one I'm testing out. So it's basic spiral bound, copper spirals. I don't know how many pages. A lot. Uh, this has to be what 80, 100 pages, probably 100 pages, maybe. It reminds me a lot of Mormon in style and color, right? It's got that ivory cream color. Yeah, copper gilded edges. Every notebook, including this, did the sticky pads have it? The sticky pads may not have had it, had it, but every notebook uh, did have copper gilding. Um, it reminds me of Mormon in look, style, feel, really nice. You can see, um, you know, I have a few notes up here from yesterday. That's with that broad nib. There's no feathering, no bleeding to speak of. You can't see through anything. So I love the format. I love the style. I love the looks. It has their little quote here on the inside cover. Wow, 33 USD. I'll have to check. That's the one thing I haven't checked is on the price. So yeah, I don't know. And I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm familiar with Milligram. Um, but I mean, they're having to import them too, right? So I don't know. That's very expensive. Like you're getting into like the hardcover A5 that I like the most is the Apica CD Premium, and it's like thirty-four dollars. Um, we'll have to see what these are. So I do not seek, I find. You know, I don't do much of the motivational stuff. I could, I could do without that. But uh, eighteen fifty, man, that's close-ish. Like I said, that's around Mormon uh, prices. Like you're getting around the eighteen fifty. 1850 range for a5 spiral something like that so we'll check these out um real impressed with the initial quality test so we will all be going through every style they had i'm really anxious to see the sticky notes i don't even think i kept any for myself i think i shipped them all on but extraordinarily well made i'm very very happy with these i was impressed when i opened up the box that's for sure the other thing i already opened the latest decision of edition of the plumbago zine by andy wilfley the erasable podcast artwork by my good buddy anna reinert here on the front 
So I haven't read it yet. I just got it last night, but I love everything that they do. And uh, they now have an editor, Harry Marks, who uh, is a good friend of mine on Twitter. I don't know that we've ever... Oh, there's a crossword key in the back. I shouldn't link at that. Some of the stories are heavy, so I haven't... Uh, I'm looking at Time at Grandma's right now, but I haven't, I haven't started reading it yet. I usually sit down and just plow through the whole thing in one sitting, so I'll probably do that this weekend. So uh, one of these days I'm going to write something for them. Um, I was supposed to this time, but I couldn't fit it in my schedule. I got slack on that and a little bit nervous about it too, like publishing something. Uh, it's kind of nerve wracking, even though I talk to y'all and write things on the internet. This is, I don't know, it felt a little different to me. So I'll get over that fear, but uh, mostly it's about time. All right, I do have two things to open. I don't know what these are, but this is from my friend Travis out in Texas. He's TX Chef, uh, some number, something on Instagram. Look up TX Chef. He comes to, to the uh, Arkansas Pen Show, Little Rock Pen Show, so I see him there. So I didn't know he was sending me something, or maybe I did and I forgot. That's probably more likely. So, oh, he did. He told me what he was sending me. <laughs> he was sending me industrial strength sharpies <laughs> so as a chef uh he goes through some markers so i got the sharpie king size here <laughs> which you can see which i don't own one of these man but the big honking chisel on here i'm all about this so you know in my uh this is an absolute unit that's one of my favorite memes by the way if y'all ever want to make Meme jokes to me, absolute unit meme is one of my personal favorites. So, yeah. So we can. Man. That's yummy right there. Um, yeah, it's bigger than the Magnum. So it's definitely bigger than the Magnum. But the, the chisel is narrower than I thought, but the barrel itself is monstrous. Paper cat, la lady, good seeing you as always at the show. Thanks for the sub. Yeah, absolute unit right here. They should just call it that. Um, and then he sent me um, the industrial super permanent. I've, had, I've seen these for sale, but I've never owned one. But this is like uh, never going to wash off, never going to come off. Um, I need to go look at, y'all go look at Mike's uh, post-it review. And uh, Mike, did you review the industrial post-its? I wonder if this would be a good combination. So yeah, these are cool. These are standard size and shape, but extra, extreme. Thank you. I haven't picked those up yet. Are they worth getting? Yeah, I bet they're pretty rad. So I don't know. Absolute unit. Sweet. So yes, he did tell me once I opened this up, it all came rushing back to me that we were talking about the uh, the Sharpies we don't normally talk about, which is king size and industrial. I'll have to figure out how to review these. Um, I used to, back in my old days, I used to do the um, scoreboards at golf tournaments um, with Sharpie like chisel markers and whatever other markers I could find that were doing that. So I... Uh, my handwriting's changed over time, but I used to, I would never do it in a uh, calligraphy style. I did it in my printy block style and it came out really good. All right, so this one's from Scott and I didn't know what this is either until he uh, emailed me yesterday spilling the beans because once again, I talked about the um, refills for the Retro 51 and I always say, I should look up the name of the Monteverde so I just don't keep saying the Monteverde one. And Scott emails me. He's like, you should check your mailbox. I'm like, okay, I will do that. So I am assuming that's what we have here. So let's check it out. And I have a Retro 51 sitting here I can, uh, I can set. Which Scott? Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so Mike just got automated. I'll let y'all see that. Mike was trying to hide dirty words. That's Mike for you. Mike was talking about boobies, and we had to let it through. <laughs> so for your Scott sent me these for your testing enjoyment. So these are the Monteverde ballpoint refills. So these are the Parker style refills, which should fit this retro. 
<laughs> retro 51. So I have the retro 51 play ball here. And this will, um, if you listen to yesterday's podcast already, this is what we were talking about for the custom branding. So, you know, Retro 51 has, they're not allowed to say Schmidt P8197 on here, but for cheaper, you can get your own custom refill. Yay. So, yeah, there will be a, <laughs> nope, nope, didn't get modded. So, um, these should fit in there right off the bat, which I think just the basic Parker refills do fit in these retro 51s. What I want to test out, to be perfectly honest, is the um, gel ink monoverdes. So I got to check that out. Yeah, so that fits right out the gate. And this is, so this is blue extra fine. Oh, I'm holding that up, not high enough. This is blue extra fine. So I'm guessing, are there blue extra fines 0.7? That's generally what blue extra fine is for ballpoint. And you gotta get into micro for 0.7, I mean 0.5. So yeah, it's a, a per perfect fit. It's a little, uh, little clicky, little clicky clacky but I can't see any gap in here. So it's probably just a matter. Sometimes the more you use it and bang it around, the better it gets. So yeah, this is, um, can you hear that? So that's a little clicky clacky for me, but you may be able to, uh, fix that with a little bit of tape or something. Yeah. Tip wiggle. So this one I can hear when I'm writing. Um, the ballpoint tip out the cone of the nose cone. So not actually the tip, uh, not actually the ball tip, but this section around here. So this part where these two things meet they bang against each other so you can hear them so yeah you can fix it real easy with tape and what's funny is you can usually when it's bad you can see a gap like if you look at it head-on you can see a gap around here and say oh yeah I see why there's no gap on this at all so I'm actually a little bit surprised that it's uh making a noise but that's the extra fine <laughs> I, for some reason, I call it click clack. I don't know why. There's no official term for it, but it's very fine. It's. I think it's a 0.7 though, which is good. 0.7 ballpoint lines right like a 0.5 millimeter gel ink pen. So very cool. Thank you, Scott. That was uh, awesome. So now I got to get the gels, but this is the Monteverde soft roll. Yeah, that's it. Monteverde ballpoint refill for Parker style ballpoint pens. Super cool. Um, I like how Monteverde does some size um, differences than the standards. So they'll make things to fit the standard pens and then they will go with a smaller tip. So that's very good. All right. What questions do y'all have for me today? That's all the show and tell I have, unless y'all want me to read uh, like legit reader mail. But I don't want to read. I don't want to read people's letters <laughs> online without reading them ahead of time. I haven't opened these yet. Um, they've been sitting here for a while. <laughs> a while. I apologize to those who I haven't gotten to yet. But uh, I wouldn't do that. But I did get a uh, sweet Mister Rogers stamp on this one. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go through that off screen. Uh, is that it for today? I'm thinking so. We did good. We had a big pen show. We had a good mail day. We had um, we had a good stream. So what's uh? So who's going to San Francisco? I don't know if Robo Jim's still here. He's going. I unfortunately can't make it. Pardon me while I drink. Super thirsty. Oh, Jesse's going. So maybe uh. Oh, Mike, you're going. Nice. 
so Jesse, you'll get hopefully you'll get the opposite. Um, maybe you can get some where's Brad's at. Although I imagine that'll be Lisa Van S getting the where's Brad's, but you can send me the the where's Brad counter. Um, like I was, I sent Jesse after Friday or Saturday. I said I had ten where's Jesse's today, because <laughs> everyone was wondering where you are. But uh, I hope you have a I hope you have a good inventory in San Francisco, Jesse, because uh, they're gonna hunt you down because your stuff is awesome. So yeah, looks like it'll be another good crowd in San Francisco. Um, I'll be interested to see how the uh, the hotel renovation finished up. So they were in the middle of it last time we were there. It didn't really affect things very much as far as we were concerned. Oh man, first day of school. Yeah, my, my kids was Monday. Monday, Monday. So we're already knee deep. Oh, <laughs> here's Jackie out of the blue getting modded. So let's see what she says. Nice. So I let Jackie fondle my cum poo. <laughs> and she went out and bought one. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is funny. So yeah, Jesse, my uh my sweet version of sweet freedom today was um not taking the kids to school, but taking them to the doctor for their annual checkup, which is the opposite direction of school, then taking them back to school to drop them off, then coming over here to Studio B to stream, then going back to pick them up at school, and then taking Elizabeth to gymnastics, and then I will get home. So that's how my day's going. Hopefully your day is less crazy than that. But it's not every day. That's why we do it for the kids. That's why we love them. So good times, good times. Oh, yeah. I Yeah, I avoid the shopping stuff like a plague. I'll handle the stationary stuff. I'll handle pens and pencils. That's my department. <laughs> and my son's easy. He doesn't care. But my daughter, she's 12. Of course, she cares about everything, right? I mean, it's just what you do when you're a 12-year-old girl. So she uh, she was texting me pictures of her first day of school outfits while I was in D.C. because it was Monday. So, whoo, graduating. That's good. That's really awesome to, like, finally. I don't know. It's a different kind of stress. You can get to breathe a little bit but now you have a different kind of stress. So it's like you can never not be a mom or a dad, right? No matter how old they get now, how far gone they are. You're like, if I can just get past the tweens or the teens. And then the next thing you go, it's like, do you have a job? Are you paying your rent? <laughs> That's always something. We'll always have something to, to get on our kids about, but it's awesome. So, all right, what else y'all got for me? <clears throat> What's happening today? What do I need to be watching for in the stationary world? I feel like it's time to, uh, we're getting ramped up again here. I feel, you know, a little bit dialed back in where I was um, a little bit out of the loop in July. Um, pilot, what's today? The 9th. So I did hear one rumor. One of the vendors said a pilot 100th anniversary announcement will be August 14th. Don't hold me to that. Unverified rumor. Um, who knows? It's been so late, so delayed. So I'm watching for that. What else should I be watching for? Who's got anything coming up soon? Oh, Joshua released a bunch of Pelican stuff. And there was an orange... Uh, oh, eight months. That's amazing. Yeah, There was an orange Pelican 600 coming out soon. Or that was in his rumor mill. So I'm watching for that. You know, because I said I need to get rid of all my pens, so that's of course I need to buy more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have my hope at this point, I don't have any hopes for Pilot One Hundred anymore. At the beginning of the year I was all hype. Maybe we'll get something that we can all afford or across many price ranges. I the way this is going, I it doesn't seem like it's gonna be that way. I hope I'm proven wrong. But it's not shaping up um, to be that way. But we'll see. We'll see what it is. Sailor Riallo. You know, that is one pen I do not own. Um, that's a fantastic pen. But I don't have the Sailor Piston Filler. Um, the closest I've come was the Bung Box uh, Soleil a few years ago. The all yellow one. Jeff ended up buying that one. Because um, I didn't care totally for the gold trim. But in retrospect, that was a pretty cool pen. But uh, hopefully they, I'd like to see them do more in the Riallo line. I don't know if they have a hard time because the price point is so much greater than the Pro Gears and 1911s. 
Um, Flammy Wift, Pilot Might. What is next? I'm not sure. Platinum and Sailor just had anniversaries recently. So, yeah, I don't know. King of Pins, Riallo. I would set aside money for that if that happened. I see a mic. Yeah, King of Pins, Riallo. You know, I looked at the King of Pins, Arushi at DC, and the price has gone up so much on those, they are out of my price range. Like, I, I don't think I can even consider those anymore. So the. Uh, they um the red one they had the red and um rhodium trim and orange and gold trim but that's that's out of my price range i have seen the 2018 vanishing point and my thoughts are that it's extremely boring and i have no interest in it, in it. it's a fine looking pen it just doesn't move the needle for me you know it looks like a burberry pen which that's fine it's just boring like it's a hundredth anniversary, man. It, we gotta give me some, give me something, pilot. Make me, make me go crazy for it. Yeah. So they had uh, orange and red, and they were nineteen hundred, and it wasn't that many, long ago. They were like twelve, thirteen hundred, maybe blacks in that range, but that's too much. Too much. Doesn't move the needle point. I like it. Oh, uh, Methanius was talking about KWZ inks. Huge fan of KWZ inks. I just got the St. Louis one um, brought to me, so I need to ink that up. I really, and I have a um, sample of the Walkover Vistula, which looks like an amazing blue, blue black for me. Yeah, 1900, Andrew. It was, it's, it doesn't do it for me at that price range. Beautiful pen, but. Man, I can get some serious Nakaya for that money. Like, serious Nakaya. And I, I don't know if I want to pin that expensive. Like, that's a little bit out of my comfort zone. Yeah, fix that. Were you trying to uh, take the clip off, Rewiz? Sounds like you were trying to get the clip off. Sometimes they just, uh, the, the cement, the connection breaks and gets a little bit, uh, yeah, gets a little bit brittle. So I haven't had that happen to me yet, but should be easy enough to fix. Yeah, that's in serious custom Nakaya range. Bro. We'll see. So back to the KWZ ink. I think I am going to do an ink. I think I want to. Um, I don't know who I'm going to do it with, but KWZ is on the radar. I think I'm, I'm getting the bug again. <laughs> there you go, Emil. That's what I want to see. All right. We're going to wrap it, wrap it up here gang after i allow this comment from stereo sound which was quite generic yet god modded so um thank you all for hanging out and showing up i appreciate it this is fun i'll be around playing some games uh this weekend so if y'all have any if you're like super bored and want to watch me shoot aliens come by and hang out this weekend and then uh we'll work on a stationary stream for next week and uh and we'll see see what we can do for that. So thanks again. I will talk to you all later. Have a good one.